owners of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, and my daughter, host of the Rachel Cruz Show, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour, and a bunch of other things as my co-host today. We're taking your questions about your life and your money. And you're back. I'm back. I know. There was a bet going on 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 social media. If you would ever come back, everyone was like, where is Dave? (laughs) Proof you can't count on social media for anything. Uh, I know. I know. Well, welcome back. Well, it's good to be back. America missed you. Glad you're here. Sharon and I have been down south for a month and a half and um, took a little time off. We've never done that in the entire working life. So I've never taken that much time off. But uh, so I'm ready to be back. I'm getting stir crazy. Proof I'll never retire because she would not let me. But yeah, uh, we had fun though. We had a blast, and uh, it's good to be back in front of the microphone again. And uh, we can put all the fears of the YouTube commenters to rest, I guess. But uh, or whoever it was that was commenting. You're still here. You're still here. I didn't know that there was a commenter, but you you, you saw. Well, there's a couple. Yeah, a couple were like, I mean, he may never come back. We <laughs> we don't know where he is. And no. usually the first show with Dave back, he's a little feisty. So oh, you know, so read that. and all of that. Everyone get ready. Well, it's because I get afternoon coffee. That's what (laughs) does that. So, yeah. Open phones here. We'll talk to you about your life and your money. The phone call is free. And some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. 888-825-5225. Let's start with Reed in Dallas. Hey, Reed, what's up in your life? Hey, I'm doing good. How are y'all doing? Better than we deserve, brother. How can we help? Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out if my wife and I are kind of living recklessly. We make... uh, you know, good money, and but we also spend, you know, a lot of the money that we have. Um, we followed your plan. We paid off a hundred thousand dollars in debt a couple years ago. Now our only debt is our house. But yeah, again, we just kind of we spend most of what we make. Why? Um, why do you feel like you're? Uh, why do you you feel you think you're out of control, or you wouldn't ask the question? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we take multiple vacations a year. We go to you know Europe or Asia. Uh, pretty much every year or somewhere in the Caribbean. Uh, I mean, we do, we still save about 20% of our income. Mm-hmm. Are you, but, are you, you still know. doing generosity? Yes. Okay. So you're generous, you're investing and you're enjoying your money. What's, yes. what's out uh, of control? <laughs> I don't know. I just maybe feel like we should be saving more. I mean, we make, you know, after taxes, after 401ks, you know, it's you know, about 13,000 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, yeah, do we need to be saving more? I, I don't know. Because you're the saver <laughs> and she's the spender. <laughs> I buy stuff too, but. Yeah, but, uh, sa- yeah, yeah. But, but of the two, you're the saver. Yes, sir. And savers never save enough. And spenders never That's can proper. spend enough. <laughs> That's, That's just nature. Right. I mean, I get it. I, I, you know, I can tell you no matter how much we save, Sharon looks at me and goes, are we saving enough? Because she's the saver and I'm the spender. Okay. Is that is that is that is it just your tendency, or do you really have actual data points that say I'm out of control? It's probably my tendency. Again, I mean, we both yeah, we max out our 401ks mm-hmm. and save uh, into our own investment accounts. On top of that, and how old are so, you? So I mean, thirty. And how much is in your 401ks now? Uh, it's about two hundred thousand. And when will your house be paid off? Uh, about 10 years. Okay. So you'll be a millionaire at 45 to 50. Not too bad. <laughs> okay. Now, do you all read, you said you save 20% of your income. How, what percentage of that goes into retirement investing and what percentage do you guys have saving just maybe short term savings? It's kind of just some liquid cash on the side. Liquid cash. We probably have about 80,000 right now. Including your emergency fund. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how much do you owe on your home? Uh, it's 185. Okay. Well, of course, if you're following the baby steps that we teach, you would have only 15% going into retirement and you would have only three to six months of expenses in liquid cash and everything above those two numbers will be going on to the mortgage. So it would be paid off in five years instead of 10. Okay. Because you're going to put about half or three quarters of this 80,000 on there. Boom. Now we got $120,000 mortgage, and we're going to quit putting so dadgum much in the 401k, another 5% a year, which is another five or 10 grand going on the house, 
uh, in addition to what you're already paying on the house, yeah, you're done in five years. Now, when the house is paid off and you're 35, start to feel pretty good then. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah and read. And I would say too, for you guys at that point, you'll be 35 on baby step seven and there may be other financial, you know, milestones y'all want to hit. Maybe you want to buy a second property in cash, right? Or you like you, maybe you want to do something else that may slow down your lifestyle in order to hit these other goals yeah. that you want to have. So that may be the case, but for where you guys are right now, I mean, it so sounds I, like you I do well. I think that you need to, uh, I, I would adjust those two numbers if I were you because I think it's going to get you to your overall goal faster. And I would institute a, uh, for a little while, you don't have to do it forever, but for right now, at least once a quarter, go somewhere with your wife for three hours and don't do anything except look at the numbers and dream and say, okay, let's get aligned on what we're doing. Because I kind of think y'all put this in on autopilot and it's disturbing you. It's not bothering her a bit. <laughs> That, that sounds right. I think I was just used to, you know, that kind of the gazelle intensity yeah, of paying yeah. it off. And well, and, you're, you're, and you're, you, you just, you worry about the numbers all the time. And that's okay. That, that, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it doesn't start becoming anxiety inducing. But but the, the paying attention is a good thing. But I think the two of you getting aligned and her hearing that you're concerned about this is a good thing for her to hear. Yeah. And Reed, and I would encourage you guys, the house will be the next big goal, but always have a financial goal. Even a baby step seven, have something you're working towards. Like Winston and I, one of our big goals was to build a house and we moved in in 2019. And there was probably a year, I mean, 2020 hit with COVID and everything, but I mean, maybe a year, year and a half where we didn't have another big goal. And you do look up and you think, oh gosh, like, are, uh, what, are am we? Am I being wasteful? Yeah, am I out like, of control? It's, that, it's just kind of that feeling. So I think there's a natural health to saying, hey, there's something else our money is going towards besides just the 15% and building wealth and all of that. But there's these other things that we're we're saving up for. And I just think that's a good rhythm to be in. It's just to kind of always have that thing out there that you're always thinking about and working towards as well. That, and, that makes you feel less like floundering. Yeah. And the goal can be um, a systematic uh, increase in your generosity and go, I, you know, like, yeah. You know, I want to give away X by the time I'm 40. I want to, I want to, I want to build a wing on the freaking hospital. I don't know what, whatever it is you want to do. I don't care, but that can be your goal. It doesn't have to be something you're doing right. for your own uh, net worth. It can just be that, I, but you got to, you really need to have, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. That's your point. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you're exactly right. You're well, it just exactly feels like right. you don't have anything that you're well, like you feel, anchored you feel listless, toward. You feel listless and yep. shifting. Yeah. And that's a little bit about what Reed's feeling. He's feeling a little bit, uh, uh untethered yeah exactly and so if we get a, an alignment and we discuss in high definition what our dreams are we align our high definition dreams in our marriage and then we go okay i heard you but i think we're okay okay now that you heard me i think i'm okay mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing yeah. and just get aligned on that and say this is what we're doing then you can make decisions like that that's a cool thing this is the ramsey show Hey guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y Refi. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey.
Thanks for joining us, America. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. Michael is with us. Michael is in Davenport, Iowa. Hey, Michael. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey. How you doing? Better than I deserve, man. What's up? Good to hear. All right. So this basically is just a question on my wife's spending habits and my saving habits. <laughs> I'm a hog farmer out here. And right now we currently own three hog farms and I own one house. It's all paid for. I have zero debt to my name, 31 years old. And the big question is my wife, she wants to buy another house. The problem with the house that we have now, which I don't have a problem with it, I grew up in it, it's too close to our hog sheds. So the smell is a big problem. Well, so we rent a home in town that's about five miles from the farm to kind of just to please her to get the smell she doesn't she doesn't like the smell well the house that we rent the landlord passed away about two months ago and he left in his will that we you know have rights to buy the house from his daughter well his daughter doesn't want to rent she wants to sell the house to us I have saved up a lot of money, and I do not want to buy a house. I would rather buy a hog shed. Now, I don't own the hogs. The company owns the hogs. They rent the buildings off of me, and I take care of the pigs. I have saved up 431000 right now is what I have, and I would rather go another two years and buy another hog shed to put on the farm. And the hog sheds do two things the company pays the bill pays the rent on the first of every month or never a day late which is good that's why i don't rent the people michael how, um, how long have you been married four years okay all right there's a buddy four of mine that's a comedian now. has a wonderful saying happy wife happy life so far we're there no you're yeah. not no you're not you're a hog farmer that's gone hog wild. All you think about yeah. is hogs. <laughs> and I love Absolutely. that. I think you're a business guy, and you're great at what you do, and you got it dialed in, and it don't bother you a lick. Your wife ain't going to stay there, brother. She done told you that. You need to listen to her. I need to be looking at buying this house. Is what you need saying. to write a check. For this, and the house is only forty five thousand. So wonderful! Shut up. It's only forty five thousand dollars. You can make her happy for forty five thousand oh, dollars, and you're buying a four hundred thousand dollar hog shed. Michael. <laughs> well, listen to this, this. woman doesn't yeah. ask for much. And absolutely, and to be honest with you, she's she's the one that shows up when the help doesn't. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, did, she did marry you. Yeah, and knowing <laughs> knowing that she involved, was going to yeah. live next to a hog shed. So, I mean, you must be a prize, Y'all have kids, Michael? She, she's coming in there. She's, she's awesome, man. Look at you. Wow. I, dude, I do, buy the I have, house. <laughs> I do have, uh, I have twins that is three, and our oldest daughter is six. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Is so, she home hey. with them all day? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She works part-time. You're, you're a um, great farmer and a great businessman. You know your numbers inside and out. You, you 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 take care of all the details. I can hear it. I've worked with entrepreneurs for 30 years. I can hear everything about your business acumen. I think you're very, very good at what you do. You suck at taking care of your wife. You <laughs> yeah, need to absolutely. buy her a house. A lot to learn. You need to buy her a house. I know. And, Michael, I'll say this. I feel like you're getting beat up on this call. There was a lot of eyes. I saved up this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did that. And you guys are a team. And part of a team is there's an A and a B. It's not just an A. And bring her in. She has as much weight and yeah. as much value to the conversation and what how she wants to live her life as much as you. And it, I, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm poking and fun. I'm poking $5, fun $5. at you, but I'm, ha- I'm having fun with you. But in all in all truth, she's not asking for much. And you, you can easily provide what she's asking for. She's not asking to buy a $4 million house. Correct. Correct. She's not asking you to sell off your hog farm. Correct. And she's not Correct. even asking you to slow down because the 45000 is not even going to slow down. You're not going to build that shed within $45,000 estimate anyway, probably. 
No, a new shed now is yeah. the dirt work and everything is about nine hundred thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah. So we we got a little while to go. Anyway, so okay. buy, buying then, this house is not going to throw your goals off. Is my point? You're you're on the on your business goals, and um and what I have figured out in doing this for this marriage thing for forty three years and doing this business thing here at Ramsey for thirty five of those is that. The best thing I can do is have no drama at home because I got enough of it at work. Gotcha. And it makes me more valuable when I'm at work. Yes. Yes and amen. I know. I'm convinced one of the reasons that Ramsey is successful as it is is that your mother is no drama. Yeah. And doesn't ask for much. And neither does Michael's wife. She doesn't ask for much. Right. And she would feel valued in what she brings to the table, too. Yeah, right. I take her, and, and, I there's take her that, and there's that extension to say, yes, yeah. my, like, listen to her, Michael. We were, look, wants, we were yeah. looking at an investment thing um, a week ago and walked through it all. And, and she's like, I don't care. And I, I said, I know you don't care, but we're going to walk through it because mm-hmm. I want to see if your eyes roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how, I want to see what you really you really <laughs> do care, but you're not going to say it. So I want I want to see we'll see if you shift in your seat. I want to mm-hmm. watch your body language while you're looking at this because I'm going to you know and because I could tell what she's thinking. Then sure, we've been yep. married long yep. enough. So that then there's about who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, and he will have no lack of gain. Proverbs 31, it is a financial principle. If you'd like to have no lack of gain, listen to a virtuous wife, not a Cinderella, not a princess, but a virtuous wife. And everybody, as you said, has a vote. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then we make good decisions together. That's right. And now you and are one. And everyone from California should move to Iowa and buy a forty-five thousand dollar house. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's so fun. Go, go, That's Michael. So Enjoy it. You guys will make it a home. It's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm excited for you guys. I love it. That's fabulous. Good for you. Good for you. And what a great business guy. He really yes. is. Yes. It's wonderful. And you're 31. You're gonna have. It's you're killing. Gonna do great. You're killing gonna do great. It. Olivia is in San Diego. Hi, Olivia. How are you? Hi, Mr. Ramsey. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? <laughs> um, I am just calling. So we are on baby step three. We just got out of debt. We are in Southern California. And just to condense my question, I'm essentially wondering, should we move someplace less expensive, but leave our family, leave our church, leave everything? You know, we have two kids in order to build wealth. How, how, what do you guys make? So my husband made 70000 last year. I work on his days off. Um, I'm an independent agent, so I make, I, my taxes are like 13%. He pays. Um, what do you I make? Back, I made 30000 last year. Okay, so you have a $100,000 income in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where uh, are you guys living now? So we're in Carlsbad, California. Yeah, um, yeah. But my husband. Uh, but my husband, we're looking to go to Arizona. Okay. But we just is, is the we the way you asked the, the question, right the the way you formed your sentence. You don't want to leave. No. Okay. And you because you made it but sound we like we're only doing sense. this for money. The only reason we're, we're going just, to Arizona is for money. Yes, that's that, the only reason. But right now, I am like. Like working so hard to try to keep my daughter in private school, a Christian school. Yeah, you can't, uh, it's not you don't have a sustainable situation where you are, right? No. Yeah. But we have support. For, I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking I was going to cry. It's okay. Um, we have a help right now with our family. Yeah. Well, it's heartbreaking to move away from the grandparents, um, but you're either going to change careers to be able to sustain the situation, or you're going to make yeah. some different choices, like not private school. To sustain the situation. Something's got to give. What you figured out is the math isn't working, and that's very wise. Now, what's going to give? Private school, career change, or a move? Really, one of these three things, and all three of them are painful, choose your pain, because it'll choose you if you don't.
Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry. But listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. You can stop by and hang out with us anytime you want if you're in the Nashville area. We do this show on the glass, and so you can watch it happen. And that's from 1 to 4 Central Time. The cookies are homemade, and they're free. The coffee's free. And, um, hey, we love having you. We, we come around, stop, we come out the commercial break, get books signed, and take pictures, all kinds of things. Also in that lobby is what we call the Dead Free Stage. And Christy and Steve are on it, which can only mean one thing. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing great, Dave. How are you? Better than we deserve. Where do y'all live? <laughs> Wilder, Kentucky, right outside of Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, just across the line. Okay, well, welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you guys paid off? $351,840. Wow. And how long did this take? Nine years and eight months. Nice. Nine years and eight months. Good for you. And uh, your range of income during that decade? We started at 36000 Mm-hmm. And we are now at 287000 Well, there's a nice move. <laughs> okay. And so what do you guys do for a living? I'm a sales manager. Uh-huh. And I'm a chiropractor, uh, and I own my own business. Okay. So you got the business, you got the practice working, and the uh-huh. sales management's working, and you're kicking it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Way to go, you two. So I'm guessing with this length of time and this amount that in uh, K- northern Kentucky, southern Ohio, they, you might have paid off your house. No. 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 <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. I left out the chiropractor, chiropractor. part. Uh-huh. It's your fault. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, the chiropractor debt of 200 was of this, right? Yeah, uh, we, yeah we yeah. had a small, I had a car. We had about 7000 left on that and about 1500 in credit card debt, but we paid it off every, you know, at the time mm-hmm. we were paying off every month. So we paid that off and the rest was student loans. The yeah, student over 300000 uh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's where it ended up after yes. all that time and interest and sure, all of that. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there was there was uh, undergrad in there, quite a bit of interest there, and then yeah, chiropractic school. Yeah, and his master's. So. Oh yeah, okay. and my master's degree. So, so the degrees. nine years and eight months. I'm guessing that that's when you came out of school. Pretty much. And just started the practice, and you guys were just newly married and get things going, I'm betting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And but I'm also guessing that at some point in those nine years the intensity suddenly turned on. Was it from day one? Uh, Pretty much. So we had just bought a house. He had just started his practice, and we had no money. And um, I was working part-time and also helping him in his office, and we realized we had an income problem. Um, And so my my cousin told me about Dave Ramsey, and I checked the book out. He checked it out. We made a budget, and we wanted to start a family, but we had no money. So we had to we put every dollar we had together and got started, and I got a full-time job, and... um, and then just went up from there. So. Yeah. And as every time the practice went, we threw it at the debt. Every time they got yes. a sales commission, threw it at the debt. Every dollar. Yeah. I changed careers actually through COVID. I was laid off and then um, stayed home with the kids for a little bit. And then, wow. yep. So you, and you had, so you had two during the time. How old are they now? Uh, they are seven and six. Seven and six. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Right so in the middle of all this. For yeah. all the young families listening, you guys started it before kids, during yeah. kids, you know, you're raising little ones during it all. Like what, what would be the hardest thing would you say about the journey? Well, with the kids, we, it wasn't uh, a really easy um, process. So they were both born. Um, both of them required uh, 
emergency procedures. Mm. Um, the older one needed surgery three weeks after he was born. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. And so then, you had medical stuff on top of this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The second one was, um, it was very emotional. Um, Chrissy uh, abrupted, which means she started yes. bleeding the placenta, pulls away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he had to be... Um, Delivered at 34 weeks, oh spent gosh, three weeks in the NICU, Wow! came home for two weeks, then got RSV and almost died again. Oh, and oh, luckily, he so, knew CPR, honestly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, oh, y'all, you've been through it all. Yeah. And so then, we hit, um, our, we hit our deductible three years in a row of $6,000 in there as well. So, yes. so there was another 18 grand right in there. So, And wow. um, I had two under two and my 90-year-old my grandma lived with us for three years. So we were taking care of her at that time up yeah. until COVID happened. So, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we were. So y'all have had a whole journey through this nine years. It was a bit. A decade yeah. of life. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. But we're so excited to be here now. Yeah. So it was paying off debt. Would you say it's like, oh, yeah, that was like, oh, we'll throw that in, too. Right. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it almost becomes that like, yeah, after experiencing this with like with your kids, it's Absolutely. like, we can do this. If we can do that, we can do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it's it's been a heck of a journey and it's been great with these kids and we're so happy to share it with them. Mm, sure. So great. Now that the dad is 100 percent gone. How's that feel? Uh, oh. Amazing. Never th I, the, the light at the end of the tunnel felt so far away for so long. And so it's really exciting. It was. It was. Yeah. yeah. We're renovating our house now and um, all cash flowing that and um, excited to be able to do things with our kids and change our family tree. And we're so excited. Yeah. I mean, nine freaking years. Yep. From 37,000 to, to 287. I yep. mean, that's a quarter of a million dollar swing and two babies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And some NICU thrown in. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. And what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Because you stuck with it. I mean, you persevered. Oh, yeah. The I think the biggest key was the budget. Um, even at, you know, our $36,000 initial starting salary, we were finding, you know, $500 a month and putting that towards our debt and started that, that ball moving. And you know, we were avid listeners of the podcast, you know, even when we couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, that podcast, you know, we heard other people doing it and it really helped us out a lot um, to to hear about those, you know, those stories and how people are, are, are making it and it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. When we were about halfway done, we drove by and did a family selfie in front of Ramsey Solutions out here. So <laughs> little things like that was like, all right, come on, let's keep going. So yeah. We can do this. We can do fun. this. Yeah. Well, I'm so, so great, I'm guys. so glad that you took inspiration from the, all these other debt free screams, and now you get to be one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool because there's somebody out there with a baby mm -hmm. in a NICU that doesn't know if they're going to make it, and you're just telling them they can by your presence. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, just keep going. Yeah. Mm. Well done. Well done. Congratulations, you guys. Thank Thank you so proud of y'all. Thank you. So Thank great. you. Who was cheering you on, saying go, 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 go? Honestly, we were we were very private about it. Um, we kept it, you know. Uh, pretty close to the chest and uh, Until you know, now. our family I mean, <laughs> our family knew but uh pretty much pretty much kept it close to the chest so we didn't have a whole lot of uh cheerleaders i guess that really or naysayers for that matter right. because Correct. it was just none of your business you everyone know. knew what we were doing but yeah, yeah. so good for y'all way to go very cool congratulations Thank so you. proud of y'all what's the first big thing you do now get the house paid off i guess but other, other than that yeah get this house renovated and uh we're gonna you know start traveling i really want to um share the world with our with our boys um it's something that i wasn't able to do as a kid we didn't grow up with a lot of money uh, my family had a hard time with money mm -hmm. all as i was growing up so i'd really like to let mm -hmm. them experience the world. Hey, man. So that's great. a great legacy. Good for you. Well done. All right. What's the young men's ages? And uh, let's introduce them. Their names and ages. Bring them up. This is yeah. this is Ashby, and this is Austin. Ashby is seven, and Austin is six. All right. So have, have they been practicing yeah. their debt-free scream? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We almost got All kicked the out of the from... hotel this morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That's good. Well, the hotel needs to know about this. It's yeah. good. Yeah, it's very good. Hey, we've got the Baby Steps Millionaire's book for you, Total Money Makeover book and the financial peace membership that's the live and give box for you as our gift thank for you. saying thanks for coming down we're so proud of y'all way to go thank you all right christy and steve ashby and austin from uh kentucky just south of ohio there three hundred and fifty two thousand paid off in nine years and eight months making 36 to 287 impressive count it down let's hear a debt-free scream all right ready boys 
Here we go. Three, two, one. We're done for you! Wow. Wow. They are amazing. They're they're cool. So that is great. very cool. Good for you guys. You're oh, inspiring. It's a lot of life in there in Man, that decade. A Stay decade, with it. A decade. Wow, that's impressive. And now I'm gonna show my sons the world. I love it. Just like that. This is the Ramsey Show. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with the real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country. And they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Danny is in Miami. Hi, Danny. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited. <laughs> well, good to talk to you, sir. How can we help? So, uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking because I'm not really good at talking about, you know, finances and stuff like that. But the main point of uh, the reason for my call is because me and my fiance, who are, we're getting married in July in Montana, but... Uh, she inherited a house from her grandparents after they passed away. Mm -hmm. And where right now it's been a rental property for a couple decades, right? Where somebody in the front of the house has been renting and then somebody in the efficiency in the back has been renting out, right? It brings in, well, right now we're, we're renovating it, the, the back end of it. But we know that once we get it fixed up, total should bring about maybe $4,000 a month in rental. Mm -hmm. Um, her perspective is that she wants to move in, um, into that house. The house is paid off. Um, where, where is the view, house? It's in, it's in Miami and Cole Gables. Oh, okay. And, but you're getting married in Montana. That's what threw me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she wants to move into the house, which is paid off, right? Just to maintain it would be about $1,500 a month. Uh, aside from the 4,000, if we kept it rented. My standpoint, or at least my perspective, is that if there is a scenario where we can, and I know you're all about, you know, cash, 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 right? Um, if finding a home using the benefit of my first home buyers, right, to uh, find a new house and then use the rental property monthly money to put uh, to pay off its mortgage of a new house because yeah. i my, my perspective is i really want to maintain a rental property mm -hmm. instead of just moving into the house that's paid off mm -hmm. okay how old are you danny i'm 28 good for you and she's 27 good for you well I, I i share your love of real estate investing i believe in real estate investing i own a whole bunch of real estate i love it and mm -hmm. not everybody should own real estate you have to deal with these things called tenants and so sometimes you shouldn't own real estate, but I, it, it's not a problem for me. I do conflict well, so, um, I can handle it. And so, um, I, I'm with you on owning investment real estate. Uh, Rachel's husband does real estate for a living, runs our family real estate and has his own company as well. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, 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 both of us love real estate. And, and so we're, we share that with you. We do also know that the shortest distance between where you are and wealth is to become and stay debt-free house and everything. 
That's mm-hmm. why we're cash, 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 cash all the time, because it's the best thing for you. It doesn't affect me if you go buy a house on debt. It affects you. So I, it doesn't mm-hmm. you know, Once we get off the call, my life's going on, and you're going to be dealing with the debt, not me. So, but, but, but I love you, and I want you to win. I want you to go out there and, and be big time wealthy. And the shortest distance is not borrowing money on a residence and keeping a paid for inherited rental. So mm-hmm. if you're going to follow that advice, then you've got two choices, actually. One is do what your fiance thinks is okay, move into one of the properties, or move into one side, rent the other. It's paid for. You have zero debt, and you're a young married couple with no debt. That's a very nice place to be and a very unusually wonderful place to be. You have your entire freaking income to invest and pile up some money and buy your first rental otherwise with cash. And that's what I did after I went broke years ago in the real estate business by borrowing too much money. So that's one option. The other option is probably emotionally painful, but also mathematically is just as valid. And that's sell the inherited property, use that cash and buy your first home for cash. Now, I don't think that's going to be real appealing to your fiance. Yeah. Because this was her granny's place, and it's been in the family, even though it's been a rental for years. It, 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 mm-hmm. She's got some emotional attachment to it. So suggesting that might not be a winner for you. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah, but, because uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good house. I mean, it's in an area that's very... Yeah. Um, her grandparents bought the house for, I believe, like $100,000. Yeah. It was years ago. You were talking, and then oh. now it's... Now it's about worth seven hundred and fifty. Yeah, and for seven fifty, you can buy a pretty decent home in that area if you pay cash for yeah. it and sell that house and pay cash. Mathematically, that's fine. But she just got this. You're just getting married. There's a lot of just starting things here. So um, I would not do your suggestion, and I would uh-huh. not do her suggestion long term. But I would do okay. it initially. And the way I would set it up with her is say, listen, I don't think long term we want to live in this house. Next to renters. But but I also. And that's why. Yeah. Even though it's granny's house and even though it's inherited and all that. But there's nothing there's nothing uh, nostalgic about a piece of real estate in most cases. So what I would say we do is we live in this house for a year or two years and then we sell it and use the money to buy a house. But for right now, we're newly married and this inheritance is fresh for you, and I want to be sensitive to that. So let's give it a little time. But I don't think we want to 10 years from now be living in this house. And I think she'll agree mm-hmm. to that because she probably doesn't either. She's just looking at, oh, I can live here for nothing. And yeah. I just got this. So, yeah. you know, I, I would suggest you spend uh, a year to two years in that house as a marriage investment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then sell it and move up. But no, I would not borrow money to buy another house with your first time home buyer. And not while you got a place to live for free. You know, your your fiance has a point. But also probably unless it's her idea would not sell it today. I don't mind the, the only thing that bothers me about selling it today is the emotions of it. I, I think selling it mm-hmm. today would be a fine idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, nothing wrong with it at all. Yeah, but she probably wouldn't go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably going to feel weird to her. Mm-hmm. And the family might go, oh, well, she married that guy. And the first thing he did is sell off the house. Well, that's because he's got sense. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, it's a good thing to sell it off, actually. Uh, I'd be rid of it and go buy a house. But I don't know that that's going to work relationally in a brand new marriage situation that hadn't even occurred yet. Yeah. So it doesn't occur till July. So but but I'm trying to think about all the angles on this. But but Danny. Yeah you're thinking like most people think that get in trouble with real estate. And that is, is that the tenants are going to pay the bill. Tenants sometimes pay the rent. Sometimes there's tenants. And when there's tenants, sometimes they pay the rent. There's a lot of sometimes in there. And those other times you pay the freaking payment. And so that's how that works. Well, you, and there's no payment on this one. If there's but no using, payment, but I'm saying but using it. To if you're buy using it house, to cover your yeah. other house, then yeah, right. you get to pay your house payment, dude. Yeah. So, you know, this this you can tell a brand new landlord when they think they're always going to get their rent. That's a brand new landlord. That's somebody who's never done it uh, because it doesn't because yeah. you don't. Hello. And there's all kinds of stuff happens. I mean, sometimes it's sad things. I, Winston was managing one of our properties, and. 
we gave this these people four months free rent because the guy was diagnosed with a terminal cancer. Yeah, yeah. He was going to die in four months. Last thing I'm going to do is evict this woman in the middle of her losing her husband. And but I can afford to be that generous if I want to be because I don't have any payments on right, it. Right, right. But and that that was just a sad thing. And then she needed to move and on anyway after yeah. he passed away. So it, you know it wasn't a long term situation, but. You can afford to do that, A. But for people like Danny. But you don't always get your rent. That's my point. Yes, yes. But for people like Danny, because the real estate game, it's always been there, but I feel like it continues just to bubble up. Social media has made it popular to be stupid again. Well, it it has risen of like, hey, here's another way to invest your money and how to grow wealth and how to become wealthy. Leverage. Yeah, that's that's, that's how most people, if they get into the game, that's where they have to start out, right, is, is leverage. So... What, how do you encourage people to say, okay, this is how how you start? It is cash, but do you? Is there a formula yeah. where it's like, okay, you know, uh, you pay off your primary home or in Dana's case, pay off case, everything, become hundred percent debt free on your personal residence, and then save up with no payments of any kind. You can save up money real fast, and you'll probably get a condo or so. Like you'll start small, your first property, yeah. buy your first little thing, and know? as you build it up. But I think some people, it's it feels defeating of like I'll never be able to get into the yeah. real estate game. I was with a, with the uh, I was on a guy's situation. podcast this morning. We were recording it, one of these big YouTube guys, and a wonderful guy. And he was quoting Charlie Munger. He said, you know, one of the things that hold – Charlie Munger says three things hold people back. Liquor, ladies, and leverage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That'll set you back. This <laughs> is The Ramsey Show. Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Paul's with us in Cincinnati to start this hour. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hey, Dave. Doing better than I deserve. How are you? Just the same, sir. What's up? Uh, Okay. So um, about five years ago, my aunt convinced my 92-year-old grandmother to change her will so that only she would inherit the uh, property that my grandma owns on a lakefront in Florida when she passes. Uh, My grandma's 97 now, and her health is not very good. I was wondering if it would be wise to try to acquire the property by means of a property tax lien after my aunt inherits it, and she inevitably fails to pay the taxes on it. Okay. Uh, So your aunt did talk to your grandmother into doing something where the rest of the family got cut out. Is that what you're angry about? Am I getting this right? That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, I don't know Florida law, but that's probably not going to work. Um, and sometimes you hear these guys, and you may have seen this. That may have been what prompted your idea. These guys in the real estate get rich quick world, uh, and they say, "Go buy tax liens, and you can just, you know, you buy people's back tax position, and then you become the owner of the property, and it's just easy. You can just do it all." Listen, I've done it like six times. Like when I used to do real estate for a living, and I was doing foreclosures for a living, never ended up with a single property, because most states, including the one I'm in, have a right of redemption that is one year or two years. So let me give you an example. If Florida has that, and I don't know Florida law, okay, but let's pretend Florida has a two-year right of redemption, which is pretty standard, then you buy the property for the back taxes at the property at the, the property sold 
because she didn't pay her taxes. And you buy it for back taxes. And you buy this million-dollar property for 100000 bucks. okay? I'm making this up. But you follow my example so far? Okay? Yes, sir. Then the former owner of the property has two years to give you $100,000 to buy the property back. That's the right of redemption. And you can do nothing with it during that two years because if you do, you're going, let's say you're going to do $100,000 worth of renovation, then they can redeem it for what you paid for it only and you'll lose your renovation money, right? Uh, if you yep. take out a mortgage to do this and you pay payments on the amount, the $100,000 you borrow to buy the tax lien out and you pay payments on that, you don't get any of the payments back. All you can get back from the other owner when they buy it back from you is what you paid at the auction. So, And I'm okay with that? No, listen, here, here's what's going to happen. Right? If she loses it and she knows she can come back and get it for hundred grand, it's worth a million, she's going to go get somebody to buy it. And so she'll come back, give you $100,000, buy back, and resell it the instant she does that. For five hundred thousand, the other guy gets a deal. She puts four hundred in her pocket and walk away. Unless she's an absolute lunatic, she's not going to walk away from a huge equity in a property tax state that has rights of redemption. So it's just. Well, you do say that it's crazy in every family, right? Yeah, this is this is a different kind of lunacy I'm talking about. This is like your my aunt. anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Paul, did she? When you said she convinced your grandmother, is your grandmother? Not all mentally, like, did she do it from a, um, almost an illegal standpoint of, of her not being, Was like, your grandmother full, not of sound mind? Yeah. She was, uh, deemed not sound of mind about two months after the will was changed. Well, I would, I would dispute the will then. But I think you're, you're better off to dispute the will on that basis. Okay. Because she didn't suddenly lose her mental faculties within a 60 day period of time. Right. So if you've got a doctor's opinion mm -hmm. 60 days after the will was changed, that will's probably not valid. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm right. I believe you. <laughs> okay. So and, I would spend yeah. my money on that angle. And really what I would do, uh, truthfully, is I would just sit down with your aunt and say what you did was wrong. And you know it was wrong because Granny was not of sound mind. And this will is not going to stand. So instead of us fighting about this in court, why don't you do the right thing and let's redraft all of this um, and, you know, come to an agreement that the family is going to have even disbursement of this instead of you stealing this from your siblings, because I'm not going to allow you to steal it from my mom and dad. I'm going to sue right. you. So okay. we need to we need to work this out without the lawyers because the lawyers are going to get it all if we use them. Yeah. I would just sit down and confront. And it's not worth I pay a lawyer for it. The property's not valuable. It's the land itself is worth about fifty to seventy thousand, and uh, the house is worth what a scrapyard would pay for the aluminum. Okay, it's more so why do you care? Where we, it's where we spent every Christmas when I was growing up. It's where I learned how to fish with my grandpa, who's been gone for about twenty years now. Yeah. And I'd like to keep it as a holiday home for my family and maybe even live there in uh, when my wife and I are up there in years. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry really that you're I'm sorry that your aunt is a twerp. And is messing with the way. family's memories. And I'm sorry that it breaks the, the little boy that lives inside of his heart. I'm going to tell you, having been in these situations myself many times in the last 63 years, just let it go. Forget yeah. it. Just forget it and move on. It ain't worth it. Go get you some memories with your babies. Go get you some memories with your buddies and the couples that you all love and spend time with them and build a new set somewhere else. That's what your grandpa did originally, and he didn't do all this for y'all to fight. Just let it go. That's, what, right. I, that's what I would do. It's hard for Which me is hard to do that. Because it's not justice. It's not. What it's he... not justice. It's hard for me to do that because I'm a hillbilly and I'd rather fight you than not. But it just. It's not. It's not worth. Yeah. It. Yeah. It just turn it loose. It's just a. You know, if it was a million five or something, we can argue about it. But I don't. 
for for fifty thousand dollars. Right, right. He, he's right. He's going to spend all his money on lawyer. And the other thing, man, it's going. To, these people are living rent free in your head for the next three years while you're in court dealing with this. You're you have tenants that took up residence between your ears. You know. <laughs> yes. Because it, it becomes all consuming and it's all you can think about, and it's not worth it. It's not worth fifty grand. Just let it go. I know you were hurt, and I know she's wrong. And Rachel's right. It's right. Ju- it's not justice. Yeah. It's not justice. It's just But for your well being, Paul. It's just wise. To move on and live your life. Yeah. Yeah. Let Spend the money and the headspace that you would have spent on this, setting up a new deal and a new legacy that will cause your grandfather to be in heaven smiling at you. Spend your time on that, man. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at NetSuite.com slash Ramsey. That's NetSuite.com slash Ramsey. doing something that we haven't done in a while and i'm really excited about it it's actually that we've never done it exactly this way we used to do a day-long event called the total money makeover event a thousand years ago rachel was a teenager even and would get up and talk about kids books and we had like five thousand ten thousand people in these arenas around and we would do that in those days we built this conference center here at ramsey that holds about 2500 and we are going to fill it up with a total money makeover weekend may 10th and 11th now there's millions of you out there have been listening to the show and this is the thing where you get to come to nashville you hang out with us friday evening all day saturday and it's all the ramsey personalities are going to be talking we're going to walk you through every little detail of this financial plan and show you how to win and we're going to do lots of q a's regardless of what baby step you're on this is going to be an all-encompassing immersion experience and um, i mean we're gonna have lots of signings and lots of uh q a's all through the day we'll do smart money happy hour is one of the things we do friday night i'm going to talk friday night when you get here you can come in early and watch the show on friday afternoon here at the at the, at the main campus or the main building on the campus and we would just love to have you now we've sold most of the tickets already it went on sale and it sold really really fast which is exciting and so we want you to come don't wait to get your tickets there's some platinum plus tickets just a couple of those left Early bird pricing ends this Thursday. If you want to come to this May 10 and 11, go ahead and get your tickets. It's going to save you over 100 bucks to get them early by Thursday. Again, it's just it's right here around the corner in May, May 10 and 11, and uh, we want you to come. It's the whole campus is going to be booming with people just like you that want to win. Get your tickets at RamseySolutions.com slash events curtis is in pennsylvania hi curtis welcome to the ramsey show hi dave hi rachel thanks for taking my call today sure what's up 
Um, so my wife is uh, 20 week, 23 weeks pregnant uh, with our second daughter. Um, during this pregnancy, uh, she was unexpectedly diagnosed with colon cancer, um, and we've begun treatment for that. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm sorry, Curtis. Yeah. Uh, we were in the middle of paying off her, trying to pay off her student loans. We got from about $160,000 down to about $60,000. And my question today is, um, do you, would you recommend that we can st- uh, continue to still try to pay down no. her student loans as we begin her treatment? No. Okay. Stop everything. Pile up cash. Have a baby fight cancer win. Okay. It's your sole goal right now. You got one goal. Two goals. Have a baby. Fight cancer and win. Once mm. you get that in your rearview mirror... It'll be nothing to pay off some student loan debt. Okay. How old is your wife, you said? Uh, she's 30. Okay. Wow. What stage is this? Stage four. So what are they telling you prognosis-wise? Um, we, we have to start treatment right away, and we have to see how her first few rounds of treatment go and see what her response is and go from there okay all right um you you've got the um the hardest fight of your life on your hands brother and uh student loans are nothing compared to this yeah you go fight you go fight this you get on your knees you pray you get all your friends praying we'll be praying for you guys and you just get in there and you fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and um and you take care of your wife and you take care of your baby, there'll be time to do the student loans later. But you need okay. every ounce of focus and energy and money that you have to win this battle first. Okay. All right. Yes. <clears throat> and then I'll just get I'll just give you another piece of information so it's in your brain, um, even though it's pretty cold for me to do this, but I'll just tell you. When someone passes away, their student loan debt goes with them it's completely forgiven so if she ends up in heaven with this okay there is no student loan anyway so we fight we fight the cancer we go win okay okay and i I didn't say that because that's the prognosis i don't know i'm not a doctor i'm just listening to what you're telling me okay but and i and i Mm -hmm. know when you're facing these things that sometimes facts are helpful that's why i gave you a cold fact okay okay not because I don't care about you. Mm. So, um, but anyway, the, I, I want you to go in. And if you were, let me just tell you, I, I'll just, this is an expanded version of what we tell people anyway. We tell people just when they're pregnant, period. Stop. Put a push pause on your total money makeover baby steps and pile up cash until baby comes and mommy and baby are okay. And then push play and use the big old pile of cash to pay and catch back up what you would have paid anyway. And that okay. gives you an extra big slush fund when there's a pregnancy. We tell people to do that anyway. And this is like 10x mm-hmm. that, right? Yes. Okay. So you need a big old pile yeah. of cash for cancer and babies. Because uh, we want babies. We don't want cancer. And we're going to win both of these. Okay. Oh, my okay. goodness, son. Hey, and listen, um, you hold on. And I, I'm going to have uh, our team pick up. We're going to hook you up with one of our financial coaches in the area for free and they're going to walk with you on the financial stuff and help you any way we can so that you can completely focus on babies and beating cancer not on money stuff okay thanks dave i appreciate it hey man i'm so sorry go go beat this and let us know okay okay all right we'll do thanks a lot just in case Mm. you thought you had a problem today yeah just in case oh Hmm. Wow. Okay. Trinity is in Colorado Springs. Hi, Trinity. What's up? Hi. Hi. How can we help? Um, so I was calling to get your guys' advice. Um, so 
A little bit over a year ago, I had a work injury, and um, I ended up just getting a settlement uh, for a little less than $80,000. And so after putting everything aside for my medical work and everything like that, I have about 60000 left. And I was just calling in to see if you guys could kind of help guide me of what you think a good idea of where I should put that money towards would be. Oh, man, Trinity, are you okay? Um, I'm getting better, but okay. Uh, what? Where are you financially today? Do you have debts? Do you have savings? Besides um, no, the settlement, I don't have any debt. Um, I have. I completely own my car. Um, the there will be. Sorry, I forgot to take out. Um, about twelve thousand of that would be set aside for my emergency fund. Okay, so it would be about forty eight thousand okay. left over. I mm-hmm. guess technically. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I don't have any debt, nothing like that. And then all of my monthly payments are um, paid through my monthly income. Okay. Do you own a home? Uh, no, I don't. I'm 22. Okay. Or is that something that you're looking into? Do you think you'll be in your area for a while now? Um, yeah, I'm hoping so. Um, I'm also studying right now to get my real estate exam or my real estate license. Okay. So I think that as well will kind of play a factor into when I'm ready to buy a home. Yeah. Do you have any retirement right now? Um, I do. I just started. Um, I only have about a thousand dollars in retirement right now, but that was something I figured you guys were going to mention was like maxing out a Roth IRA or something. Yeah, I would go ahead and do that. I would go ahead and just max it out. And then I would probably put the rest, Trinity, just in a high yield savings um, and let it just kind of sit there for a year or two. I mean, it's 5% return right now on most of them, which is which is great uh, for just short term savings. And hopefully here in the next year or two, you'll be settled down in a new career a city that you know you'll be long-term, and then I would use that money for a down payment on a house is what I would do. Um, But I would just put in a high-yield savings account right now and go ahead and fund your Roth IRA. Go ahead and max it out this year. Yeah, set your medical aside, your emergency fund, your Roth IRA, and the rest are saved towards your next house or your first house. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today on the debt-free stage in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. Chandler and Sydney are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Doing great. Welcome. Where do y'all live? Bardstown, Kentucky. It's about a 30-minute drive south of Louisville. Know exactly where it is. It's the king of bourbon town. It yep. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you guys paid off? $67,533.01. I love it. Nice. I love it. And how long did that take? 22 months. Wow. And your range of income during that two years? We started making, it was at 64000 and uh, ended a little over eighty four. Four thousand. Good for you. Nice. Well done. Well done. I love it. Well, congratulations, you guys. What kind of debt was this? It was our house. Oh! oh! Wow, we're, tiny little mortgage. Good for you. We're weird people. I love it. So you are great. officially weird. That's right. I love it. How old are you two? I'm thirty. And I'm twenty nine. What's the house worth? I'd say about two hundred forty thousand. Goodness. <laughs> That's amazing. That's well amazing. Well done, you guys. Thank you. Well done. I love it. Congratulations. Very proud of you. Good work. Good work. So uh, what do y'all do for a living? I'm a homemaker, so I stay home with her daughter. Mm -hmm. And I'm an IT director for a Catholic nonprofit. Very good. Okay. Good for you guys. Very cool. And so they what? just showed us a picture on YouTube, the house with the snow in the oh. front and everything. Looks like a great place. How many acres have you got with that? It's only one acre. It's in a subdivision, but you wouldn't believe it just from that picture. It looks, yeah, it looks like it's on a farm. Yeah, yeah. it looks yeah. big. Well, that's nice, man. Very so fun. So what set you guys out on this journey 22 months ago following this Ramsey stuff? Well, we uh, we first encountered Ramsey, I, I, I did back in 2015 and took uh, FPU, uh, one of my friends share one of your videos on social media i'm like well this guy seems to know what's going on and uh took fpu met sydney in 2017 and uh, we went through fpu afterwards and got engaged got married and um and what actually started this particular journey on the uh the mortgage payoff um my employer um did an assessment of salaries and saw that they were not, you know, paying us market rate. So we got a substantial uh, raise. Oh, wow. And it was just the weight of it was us. We're like, we want to make sure we do something good with this. We want to be wise with the with this money. There was a pretty heavy pause going like, this is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need yeah. to be careful or else it'll just disappear. Yeah, yeah. that's, what good, that's wisdom. Yeah. So we, we, we sat down one night and Sydney said, why don't we calculate what it would take to pay off the house? Okay. So <laughs> I punched it into the calculator. And I'm like, well, it, it looks like three years. So, oh, we can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> 22 uh, months later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we originally calculated, I think after we like just cut things out that weren't necessary, I think it was like May of 2024. And as things kept going on, we kept cutting, kept uh, doing, we did some extra side jobs and, um, we paid it off. It off. Oh, my are. gosh, you guys. That's what happens when you use Financial Peace University as your pre-marriage counseling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, you two. It's funny. Way I had go. taken FPU on my own, or so I thought. I thought I'd only gotten two classes in. So when we met, I was like, yeah, I've taken FPU. Look back at the book. Oops, I only went to two classes. <laughs> Let's do that together. <laughs> Oops, I'm an FPU dropout. Yeah. Not anymore, though. No. You went back and got your GED. It's okay. Well done. And yeah. you got a paid-for house and you're not yes. 30. So that's yeah. pretty stinking that's cool. That's called, that's called graduate-level work there. Yeah. Good stuff. So this is one part of debt that we talk we tell people like hey this is something that i promise once it happens and you don't have a mortgage payment the feeling it is it's the ultimate freedom it is that yeah. final final baby step would you say that that's true how has it felt for you guys there's a lot of security in it yeah yeah just you're you're right the grass does feel different under your feet we, we paid it off course in december so yeah uh, the hadn't, seen, hadn't seen the grass yet no, no yeah. not, not quite <laughs> but uh but yeah it's it's phenomenal feeling yeah well, there's, a, there's just no debt in the world. I mean, what are you yeah. going to do now to celebrate? Well, we came here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now let's do something big. Well, but, uh, we're gonna we're really wanting to save up and build a nice nice garage. Okay. Uh, so that's that's been a big dream. Um, two car garage. We're gonna build him an office in the back of it. Uh, some room for me. I don't mm -hmm. know what it'll mm -hmm. be yet, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. 
So but, uh, that's that's, awesome. that, that's the next big goal we want to achieve. I love it. Well, way to go, you guys! Congratulations. So, do you have people cheering you on while you're doing this, or did anybody know you were doing it, or big secret, or? We did. Um, we we told family and friends. Our family thought we were uh, were nuts at first, um, but. Uh, uh, we've got to give a big shout out to Sydney's parents. Uh, they were they were huge supporters, mm-hmm. uh, as well as our, our church friends uh, Austin and Andrea. They mm-hmm. were they were huge cheerleaders for yeah. us, and um, I think they're they're currently working on their uh, payoff right now. Oh, so, awesome! Yeah, very but, good. Uh, and one thing we wanted to just mention is, you know, that we did have some adversity through these 22 months. Uh, my, we lost my father to uh, suicide in oh, September my. of 22. So, oh, I'm sorry. And we. The, the emergency fund just gives you so much, uh, I guess, peace in that we were able to pay for the unexpected expenses and mm. counseling and all the things that come with that. Yeah. And uh, it just, it shook us and it made us actually, we're like, are we sure? And we're like, yeah, it, it just it reinforced us more about why we want to live a life of freedom. Mm. Um, My goodness. December 22, so COVID-related, I assume. It was September of, of 22, mm-hmm. and uh, no, it was a suicide. No, I'm saying his his suicide, was it related to the COVID issues? or No, there, no. Was, there was a lot more going on, oh, okay. and a lot okay. of it we didn't know or see. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I'm, so I'm so sorry, sorry. you guys. Yeah, it was awful, awful to go through. Yeah, you're right. Adversity is always mixed into the story. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's not uh, just, some kind. It's mm-hmm. not just all. There's some kind of flavor. Right. It's always in there. Yeah. Well, way to go, y'all. I'm proud of you for persevering, pushing out, and uh, 100% debt free. Yeah. House (laughs) worth a couple hundred thousand dollars, 300,000. Man, that's incredible. And you're 30 years old. You're going to be so wealthy. It's going to be unbelievable, man. That's the plan. You're going to be able to be unbelievably generous and and what you can do with your little girl. So bring your little girl up. What's her name and age? Uh, Caroline. She's two and a half. And, and we, we have a second on the way. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> All right. Caroline's Hi, a Caroline. big sister. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got the uh, every dollar gift card for you for a year subscription. One for you guys and one for you to give away as our way of saying thanks and coming and doing your debt free scream. Awesome. And enjoy that. Stay on that budget and keep things moving towards that incredible wealth. I'm so proud of y'all. Very, very, very Thank well done. Thank you so much. Before I, before I let you go, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Just being on the same page, communicating. Um, the budget was a huge help. We're, we're avid, avid every dollar users. Oh, uh, so this will work. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can just apply this and not have to pay us. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> but, yes, uh, just being on the same page. I mean, and just the encouragement without Sydney constantly encouraging us. I, I could have certainly done could have done it alone. Mm, so yeah. so All great. Right. All right. Well, very Congratulations, good. Y'all. Chandler, Sydney, and Caroline from Bardstown, Kentucky. Sixty eight thousand paid off on their two hundred and fifty three hundred thousand dollar home. Did it in twenty two months, making sixty four to eighty four. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt free. My goodness. So great. Oh, house and everything. You know, I uh, I was so proud of a couple like that. And they're they're sitting in a very affordable market, Mm -hmm. obviously. They got a very nice home for, you know, 300,000 bucks there. Uh, They chose a home that they could afford Mm -hmm. and that they could pay off instead of choosing one. They could qualify with their income easily for twice that or more. Yep. They chose to be reasonable and then get it paid off. Now, at 30 years old, 100% paid off, they'll be able to do anything. That's different than I'm on TikTok whining and saying, well, boomers bought their house for two black buckets of strawberries. <laughs> and and so, I, I, and you can't buy a house now because I'm stuck and I'm a millennial. Well, that's a millennial. They who's did on it. their way to being a millionaire. Yep, that's so right. So there's your two buckets of strawberries. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Kevin is in Colorado Springs. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Rachel. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? Oh, just stressed, but not depressed. (laughs) There you go. I'll get right to it. So uh, I've got a bad credit card debt from Wells Fargo that closed a year ago. Uh, I put it to the back of my uh, baby step two, figuring I could get to it, either settle it, pay it off completely, whatever needed to be done. Uh, Friday, I got served with papers. Uh, They are now suing me for the outstanding debt, uh, bad debt that, you know, I owe the money on. And I'm a little freaked out because I kind of figured, you know, it goes to like a collections company where I could maybe sell it for less or have a little bit more time. What's the balance? Straight from uh, a little under $12,000 after uh, interest and all that. On the lawsuit, that how, how, how long has it been since you paid them? Uh, the last payment that they got from me was November of 22. It was a really rough month. It's the first time I've ever missed a payment. and So November of 22. To, yeah, so you're 18, 18 months behind. Roughly. And why have you I not paid anything in 18 months? They closed the account. But they'll take payment. Uh, they, oh. Did not know that. Well, I mean, you you didn't think they were not going to take payment. You didn't. You, you knew they wanted to be paid, right? Yes, I know they wanted to be paid. I just I didn't have a way to pay it through the app, and I didn't really think anything of it. Mm. Being perfectly honest. Yeah. Now you are. So okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so on the lawsuit papers, does it say Wells Fargo? Yes. It doesn't say a debt. Formerly held by Wells Fargo. It says Wells Fargo Bank. I don't have the paperwork in front of me right now, so I can't read okay. everything. Yeah. But go go it, check it because it's unusual for Wells Fargo to do this. They usually will sell off the bad credit card debt, and the buyer of the bad debt will sue you. That's kind of what I figured. That's what usually so that, happens. But so this is an unusual case. They may, I mean, they're not above suing you for 12000 bucks if you owe them and hadn't bothered to pay them for 18 months. That's very possible. What do you make? Uh, between me and my wife, we make uh, this past year uh, roughly 130 to 140 Okay. You have any money? No, we're working on paying off debt. We actually just barely got started on the plan like getting serious uh a couple months ago so you don't have we, a, you we don't have a thousand dollars you don't have two thousand dollars you don't have anything well, we have emergency fund plus a little bit in sinking funds for you know like vehicle repairs and stuff like that but nothing serious um so so the one thousand dollar starter emergency fund plus a few hundred give or take yeah okay all right um I assume your credit's trashed. Uh, it's about six fifty to six seventy somewhere in there. It's not completely destroyed, but I, I we had a house fire two years ago, and then because of that, everything fell apart. A whole bunch of carts closed on me at the same time that I wasn't using anyway, so I didn't care. And the credit's slowly been building back up. Um, so it's gotten a little bit better. Okay, so, so you have other things that are outstanding that are unpaid as well? Uh, yes, I currently have one thousand, a little over $1,000 on another credit card through a credit union, a vehicle loan for $11,200 uh, through that same credit union, and a personal loan through that same credit union for 22500 And you're current with all of those? I am current with all of them. I'm actually working on the credit card right now. Okay. All right. Do you have any other credit cards or anything that you have not paid on in 18 months like this one? No. Everything else is either paid up or closed. Okay. Last time you told me one was closed, it had an outstanding balance of $12,000. Have you got another one of those? 
No, I, I checked every single one of those. So closed means sure. you have a zero balance. Yeah, closed means a zero balance or, you know, I no longer have credit available through them. Like, they just, I stopped using the card because... That's what I'm talking was, about, man. How much other crap like this have you got out there that you owe money is getting ready to sue you? This uh, one was laying out there. You had nothing. no available. They had closed it, but they still thought you owed them $12,000 because you do. Do you have another one of those? Yes. No. You just told me you did. No, 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 no. The, 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 the Wells Fargo card is the only one that was out there like that. Do you, do you owe money I to anyone I else that you're not current on the payments? No. Okay, so the credit cards no, that are closed I'm have zero balance. Else. The other credit cards that are closed have zero balances, nothing owed. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Because um, I don't want some other monster to jump out of the closet while we're fighting this one. That's what I was trying to help you with, okay? Um, so here, here's what will happen. You will be sued on the date that they told you. Whether you show up to court or not, you will lose. Because the lawsuit is not about anything except, do you owe the money? And the answer is yes. Have you paid the payment properly? The answer is no. Lawsuit over. Judgment, $12,000. Wells Fargo versus Kevin in Colorado. Okay? So you're going to lose okay. the lawsuit. There's no defense for not paying except paying. Okay? So it's not, not, it's not anything to panic about, but that's just what's going to happen. So this is going to lead – this is going to go from – a credit card debt to a judgment lien. It's going to convert to that because you're getting ready to get a judgment on you. And they won't do anything with it for probably ever, but eventually they might garnish you your wages or take a lien on a bank account. But it takes them usually six months minimum, but a m absolute minimum of 30 days in any state to do that. So it, what's the date, the court date? There isn't one yet. On the paperwork, there's no court date, there's no case number, anything. Then you've not been That's sued. That's why I'm still I have... Okay. Now, if you've been sued, there's a court date, and it gives you the court, the circuit court, the Sixth Circuit Court, or whatever it is you've been sued in. Okay, yeah, this, is a, has, no, this has, is a notice. They served you to scare the pants off of you, which is good because it woke you up. You needed to be woke up. So now we can deal with this. So call them. You can call the law firm that's on it. Is there a law firm listed on it? Yes, there is. That was actually going to be the question is me and Great. my wife disagreed about that because I don't, I don't trust their lawyer because he's not I don't my trust, lawyer. Well, they don't trust you. You haven't paid the bill. So this is mutual. So, Fair enough. Yeah, just call them up and say, uh, I don't have $12,000 right now. I'm behind on everything. I am I think I might be bankrupt. I don't know, I'm, but I sure can't be sued and garnished by you guys. So what can I do to settle this? What would you take? I think I can scrape together a few thousand, and I, I can probably do that and, and give them a date that's about a month and a half out, and then you stop paying everything, and you come up with two or $3,000 and offer them two or $3,000, three thousand dollars a settlement in full. A month from now. Okay. Or $6,000 a settlement in full two months from now. Okay? The, eventually, okay. if you keep barking at them, they'll take a deal. Okay? And you have to come up with a lump sum cash. Do not cut a deal for payments. Don't do that. Just I say, I can't pay that. this. I only thing I can do, I can't pay payments. I can't stand any more payments. I'm trying to stay out of bankruptcy. And if I can settle this with you, maybe I can. And keep talking that to him that way over and over and over until you come up with a number. When you come up with a number, listen to these two things quickly. Do not give them electronic access to your checking account. They will clean you out. And do not give them a dime until you have whatever deal you have made in writing. Over the phone is not good enough. They lie. Get it in writing and no electronic access to your checking account and settle this for five or $6,000 and make it go away.
Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual, amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour with our one and only George Camel, and my daughter. She's my co-host today. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Lisa is with us in Irvine, California. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you. So excited to speak with the both of you. I'm a long-time, oh, I'm a long-time listener and follower of the show. Thank you. I'm calling to get some advice on talking to my close friend. She told me that she has added her toddler, who's two years old, as an authorized user on her credit card. I almost fell out of my chair when she told me that because, like I said, I'm a longtime listener and I know this is a very bad idea. So I'm calling to ask um, how, what advice should I give to her or is it even my business to share my opinion with her? Has she asked your opinion? No, she was trying to get me to add my kids as authorized users. She told me, you should do the same thing. For what? And I kind of froze. To build, for, for to what? build the kid's credit score. People are doing this yes, now. To build the kid, yes. Cause it's a TikTok trend. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are, but yeah, it's a whole thing that if you, yeah, you put your kid as an authorized user, you build their credit. Just, the, the level of stupidity is painful. <laughs> It just really is. I mean, TikTok, my God, y'all. Um, well, I mean, it's not just TikTok, but they talk I know, about it there. but that's just that's just completely asinine. Um, so, because here's now what you've done, okay? You've opened little Junior up to like seventy three thousand possibilities of Russian hackers completely stealing his identity. <laughs> and if if little Junior stays off the Conspiracy. dadgum grid, then Russian hackers aren't going to steal his identity. So keep Junior off the grid. Oh, my God. It's a conspiracy theorist. It's not a conspiracy. It's a fact. <laughs> no. You sound I mean, like a conspiracy theorist. Ju- it's not like a me. conspiracy theory. I mean, like me? identity theft happens to people all the time, but not yeah. if their idiot parents don't put them on a credit card. Oh, my God. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to help people that dumb. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. It's just. you. Well, she. yeah, I mean. Golly. I, I, as her friends, Lisa, I don't think that there's anything you do. No, she didn't ask she your She didn't opinion. ask you, and she's not going to do anything you say. No. Just say, listen, if she says it to you again, just say, I wouldn't want to expose my child to the level of identity theft that you've exposed your child to. The probability okay. of identity theft went up 10,000x. Okay. This kid has a social security number and is nowhere else on the grid until you do this. And now you dropped them in the dadgum internet. I mean, you're asking for it. You're pointing a gun at the face well, of their the, credit oh my report. Gosh, oh, my gosh. At the face of their credit Oof, report. Okay. Well, and. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, you're asking for it. And the hard thing that happens, too, which, Lisa, you probably know this, too, because not just the identity theft. But then things happen in life, right? And parents get behind on their bill, and and then they end up trashing the kids' credit score, and it does the opposite effect of what they were, what their intentions were yeah, because they weren't planning well. Technically, a user should not get the credit of the owner anyway. I think that's what they're doing in the first place. I know, but though. technically, an approved user on the card should not mm-hmm. be affected by the credit of the card, positive or negative. Technically. Because they're not on the account. They're just allowed to use the account. So it's not, it should not show up. It's, if it does, it's, FICO is screwed up. Because it's not, they're not a, they're, they're not, not an owner on the they're account. They're just an authorized user. But I they're feel like that's why parents user. are doing that, okay, though. You're an authorized signer on Ramsey Investment, or Ramsey Solutions checking accounts because you are one of the owners of this company. But if the account goes sideways, the fact that you're an authorized user does not affect you. But just because I, you're, I you're allowed to, that that's all it means is you're allowed it. to sign. It doesn't mean you own it so or then, are Lisa, liable. So then, what, Lisa, what's her purpose of doing it? Does because she tell you? she's an idiot. No, stop. But <laughs> why? What, what, what was she saying? To no, build credit. It, yeah, it, it won't build her, her credit. It shouldn't build your as credit. As an authorized user, it, that's it why does parents, not. It's not supposed to. Should we now, Google? sometimes it gets reported that way falsely, but it should not happen because you're not liable on the account. 
if you're an authorized user. It just it's not yeah, legal. I hear you. I it's hear legally you. wrong. Can it happen? Yes, it can happen. But here's the thing. If you want to build credit for your toddler to start with, A, that's dumb. B, because you're, you're setting them up for a life of debt. Yeah. This is your plan. I want my child to use credit cards and be in debt the rest of their life. What kind of horrible parent are you? Yeah, a good credit. The, the primary credit cards, yeah. The good credit management helps them improve your credit worthiness. I know. says what? An article on TikTok? Well, I, you Google. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a That's legal what issue. People are doing it, though. Only the people that are liable on the account. And your authorized user is not liable on the account. Okay? We have 116 debit cards. No, I hear you. At, I hear you. But that's Solutions. debit cards. Is credit, card, is credit card different? Is credit cards different, though? No. It's, it, the because person debit that cards, owns the account, you don't have a, de- don't have the a credit score with a debit card. The owner of the account, not the authorized user, is responsible for the credit, good or bad. And that's supposed to be what's reported. It's not always. Yeah. So to their point, they may actually screw up their kid's credit. It's possible. Yeah. Or enhance their kid's credit. It's possible. But it's a really dumb idea because you're just asking for identity theft. You're begging for it um, because you put their kid. Because here's the thing. Who goes back and checks a four-year-old's credit twice a year to make sure that they've not had their account scarfed? But you put their name out there, and you don't go back and check on it, and you coast along thinking you're a freaking genius because you watched a TikTok video, and now you've exposed your kid's credit to being completely ripped. Mm-hmm. With, and you could look up, and there'd be five or six cards open in their name, and you wouldn't even know it because they're not required to identify you or to notify you about your kid. They don't check on it. Your kid's not going to get anything in the mail. That's how identity theft works. So, oh, God. Oh, that's so aggravating. So I don't know. I mean, the, the, the overall answer to your question, honey, is this. If somebody isn't asking you their opinion, uh, your opinion, then don't give it. I mean, I've got friends that do stupid stuff, too. So um, they're still my friend, but they're still just my stupid friend. And so uh, that, that's okay. That you got friends that do that. They do things you don't agree with. I mean, I, I, people I love that don't know how to vote, and it's all that kind of stuff. I still, still love them, but they vote wrong. And so, um, you know, there's, you just, there, you have some of that, right? Yeah. Oh, but I'm not friends. But don't, yeah, don't do. ask me yeah. how, what I think, unless you want me to tell you. That's right. Friend or on the air. Sure. And the yep. problem is when you call on the air, you've automatically asked. So it's like our <laughs> job to tell you what we think. So it's what we do here for three hours every day. So, oh, God, that's poor woman. Uh, so, Lisa, I'm sorry. You can't help her. She's not going to, even if you gave her your opinion, she's not going to do anything with it because she's got her little her little brain made up. Her system, her system going. She's just going to screw up her kid's life. Oh, God, that's so dumb. This is the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Linda's in Pittsburgh. Hi, Linda. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? <laughs> hey, um, we, my husband and I, are wondering how he can acquire his portion of the will that his mother wrote. So she passed away in 2006 and wrote a will giving the family home to her children. And his brother has lived in the ch- in the house all of his life and still lives there. And was the will was the will he probated? The will was probated by their stepdad in 2007. Okay. Uh, she passed away in 2006. 
And um, um, the, but okay, the, and so the, the stepdad. Contingent. Wait a minute. The stepdad had nothing to do with the house and the will, right? Yes, it was just one of those where it was he had the right to occupy during his lifetime. The brother, or the stepdad. The stepdad. Okay, the so stepdad. he had a, he had a life estate, and mm-hmm. the will was and the will left the property to your husband, his brother, and whatever other siblings. And a sister who. Okay, was the property retitled at that away. time? What did, did uh, Pennsylvania probate require you all to retitle it and put everybody's name on it? The house is in Colorado. Oh, okay. and it at the time of probate, um, it was retitled to all three siblings. Okay, so you each own a third, und, uh, undivided mm-hmm. interest. It's called okay, right? Uh huh. Okay, is sister still alive? You know, she she lost her battle with depression in 2017. I'm mm. sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. And did she have heirs? No, she did not. Okay, so I would suppose that your husband and his brother are now equal owners then. You would have to seek an attorney's yes. advice to be 100% sure, but let's play this through. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like they're now equal owners, Okay. And he doesn't have to do anything to acquire it. It already has his name on it. The death of his sister left her half, left half of hers to him and half of it to his brother. And so now the two of them are 50-50. Okay. It's on, his so name's on the title. If, it, if, the property, if the property were sold, he would get 50%. Okay. Okay. So now what are you all wanting to do? So he had, um, after... Probably it was two almost two years after the stepfather passed away. He approached his brother about either buying him out or selling the home, and he said, "Absolutely not. I have no interest in selling the home, and I'm not going to buy you out." Okay, who lives in it? His brother. Okay. All right. He has lived in it all his life. Okay, so he's living there for home. free. Yes. Okay. He has a he has a roommate there that pays yeah. him rent. Okay. And there's a well, little Well, here's the thing. Here, here, if you want to if you want to stir it up and cause this to come to an end because this is not this is not a fair situation. This is unjust, agreed? Agreed. Okay. Then um, your husband how how does he have any relationship left with his brother at all? Well, they love each other. It's just that they I didn't ask that. I asked if they had a relationship in the middle. Do what? There's there's I said they they love each other. There's this mountain in the middle. The house. The house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends on how much your husband wants to invest in this. But if we want to try to save the relationship, you get on an airplane and he flies out there and he sits down with his brother and he says, okay, you living here for free is done. I'm a 50% owner in this and you can't live here for free anymore. You have to move Mm -hmm. out. I'm demanding that. Or we have to sell the house or you have to buy me out. Now you decide which one you want to do. You want to move out? And we rent it, and we split the rents that we collect, or do you want to buy me out or whatever? I'll give you a deal if you want to buy me out. But you sitting here and me getting nothing and you living here for free uh, ends. I'm done. I love you. I hate what you're doing to me. It's nasty, and it's wrong, and it's unjust. And he says that to him in person to his face. Okay? And then if the brother goes, well, I'm not going to do that, you say, yes, you are. Because if you do not, I'm going to hire an attorney and I'm going to sue in circuit court to have this partnership disbanded and the court is going to force the sale of the house to give me my half. And it's going to cost me five or ten thousand dollars and you're probably never going to speak to me again, but I'm at the point that I'm tired of you screwing me over. This is how you have to handle it if you're going to handle it. Otherwise, you just got to accept it and go on. And then you have to hire an attorney, and the judge will demand that you sell the house to liquidate the estate. And they'll sell the house, and And the brother will get half the money, and you'll get half the money. Selling the house, correct? Do what? I said liquidating the estate is selling the house, correct? Yeah, you sell the house. Okay. Sell the house, and you get your half. Now, or we can have the house appraised, and at 80%, 80 cents on the dollar of the appraisal, I'll take my half. I'll give you a a 20% discount if you want to buy me out. How much is the house worth, Linda? um, From what we can tell, it's probably right around $400,000. Yeah. This is just wrong. 
and your yes. your brother in law is a leech. He's a parasite. Mm-hmm. And you're tired of it. That's why you called. <laughs> <laughs> is your husband as tired of it as you are, or is he just going to let this go on? Oh no, he's as tired of it as I am. Okay, he's just a super nice guy. Okay, if you want, to, if he wants to try to be super kind to his brother, he can fly out there and try to do this very calmly and just say, "This is over." Okay, you're going to buy me out. Or the judge is going to force the sale of the house. Because when I leave this conversation, if we're not in agreement, I'm going to contact an attorney and we're going to court and the house is going to be sold. Because you living here for free is not right. and It's not fair. You've been taking advantage of me and I can't let you do that anymore, even though I love you. That's wrong. And, and, if, brothers, and if you want to buy me out, I'll give you a discount on the appraisal. But I own 50%, you own 50%, and you can't live here free anymore. That's over. Fly, Take a plane yeah. ticket, invest a plane ticket into the relationship, try to do it nice, and see if you can get him to move off. He, he may just think that he, your brother, your, my brother's a nice guy. He's never going to do anything. And he might be yeah. right. Talking about your husband, right? Yes, I know. I know. He sees your husband as a target, and he's using it. He sees he thinks your husband's not going to do anything. Yeah. And so, if your husband right. doesn't want to do anything, it's okay. I don't care if you want if you want to just let this go on. I'm not mad about it. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to do it, that's how you do it. I, I would sell it to him at a discount because if you sell okay. it, you're going to pay expenses anyway, right? Right. And so, if it's worth four hundred thousand. I'll sell you my 200000 at 80%, which is 160 That's a great deal. You have 30 days to get me my money. If you do not get me my money in 30 days, I am going to begin a court proceeding that's going to force the sale of the house. And don't, you know, and, and that's the end of the discussion. And then just go hire a lawyer and do it. And it'll take a dadgum year. And it'll take 10, okay. and it'll be $10,000 out of your pocket in legal fees. Is there a way to find a reputable attorney in Colorado? Sure. That was our other thing. It's like, how do you, how do you find one there without? You know? uh, call, call one of our uh, real estate endorsed local providers. Jump on okay. the line at Ramsey and find the real estate endorsed local providers. Tell me you need a good real estate attorney. Okay. And they'll, they'll give you a recommendation. Okay. And um, uh, that's the only way. I mean, I, you got to have somebody you, that you trust. And these are high, high octane real estate agents that we endorse. And they'll know somebody that's a quality attorney that can litigate this. Mm. But I, I really wouldn't, you know, I, it may be that when you hire the attorney and you spend $500 and he, has to, he decides to send a letter to the brother, that that wakes the brother yep. up and then the brother does it. Because the brother's probably, he's been living this way a long time. He's probably not going to take the first, he's not going to believe your husband that he's going to do anything because he's never done anything. So he's suddenly a man of action. That's going to be shocking to the brother. This is The Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Ryan and Kendall are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Howdy. Doing where do you great. Guys, where do you guys live? San Antonio, Texas. Ah, nice. cool. Welcome to Tennessee. Good to have you. I heard howdy, and I thought, yeah. Texas? <laughs> Texas? They're, they're not from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Minnesota. <Welcome>. Yeah. <laughs> good to have you guys. Thank good you very much. It's good to be here. How much debt have you paid off? 116000 Nine hundred and forty-two dollars oh and fifty-five cents. I love it. Oh How long gosh. did this take? Fifty-four months. Way yep. to go! And your range of income during that time? So we started off with sixty-five thousand. That was my pay, and um, this last year we finished up at one hundred seventy-two thousand. Very nice. What do y'all do for a living? 
So I'm an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. And I do sales. Ah, very good. Awesome. Okay, so occupational therapist. I'm guessing the 117 might have had some student loan in it. <laughs> yes, it definitely did. What, what was the breakdown of the 117? What'd you oh, have? goodness. So the car payment was, well, the car loan was around $27,000, and the rest of it was student loans. And ironically, it was all my student loans. Oh! <laughs> I blamed it on her. I'm nope. so sorry. No, nope. that was, that was... I stand corrected. <laughs> that was a part of our journey. Um, we had most of this loans when I graduated from college when we first married about five years ago mm -hmm. and the idea that was that we had to stop the bleeding and start living a debt-free life and, and progress in that direction mm -hmm. and taking out loans for her master's program wasn't a part of that plan mm. so it, that was one of the things that we actually cash flowed through um, oh, you cash journey. flowed your occupational therapy. Wait, yeah. wow, y'all, that's huge. Thank wow, you. that's oh impressive. Gosh. While you did this, really, yep. correct? You've been married about five years, you said, about sixty months, and yes, the fifty-four sir. of it we've been doing this. Yeah. Yes, correct. sir. Wow. So you got married, and you looked at this pile of student loan debt, and you got these goals to be an occupational therapist. There, all these things are in conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. You sit down. Tell me how all this happened. How'd you get connected to Ramsey? What'd you decide to do all this? So I decided to pursue occupational therapy degree in El Paso mm -hmm. right after he had gotten offered a job in San Antonio. So we made the hard decision. He decided to keep his job because we saw great growth there and stay in San Antonio. We did long distance for me in El Paso. Oh, mm. wow. And that's quite the drive. Mm. So Ryan, on the way up one time, he decided to turn on your podcast on Spotify. <laughs> and it's a couple of episodes to get to El Paso. So. <laughs> yeah, that was my daily, that, that was my monthly. You can listen to yeah. a week's worth. Yeah. On the yeah. Way to. yeah. <laughs> so we, we started listening to it back in 2018 and, and man, uh, there's not a lot of cell reception out there. So I'd have to download them and listen to them along the drive. And before you know it in El Paso after seven hours and Hey, Kendall, I got this great idea. <laughs> um, I got a bunch of great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> listen to this. Tell me what you would do, you know, and, and having those back and forth conversations, pressing the pause button and saying, well, Oh, what, what do you think is the right answer, Kendall? And having that discussion kind of turned us on to this whole entire idea that, you know, debt is not a pet. It needs to go away. And, and that's a type of lifestyle that we want to live one day. So, wow. That's amazing, you guys. Thank Absolutely you. amazing. And then in the middle of it, had a baby. Yes. Nope. In the middle of all of it, <laughs> yeah, right? It and did, that, it and that's go life. on pause. That's, that's yes. uh, um, once or so twice. Sweet. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, what was the hardest part of this? Because you guys, you did a lot. You cash flowed school got a different career you guys were long distance together baby all of it but all of life and all of the money stuff what would you tell someone is like who that was hard that was the sack we felt that one yeah the the hard part was saying no quite yeah. frankly to all those things that you really want to do um that you know you could do um yeah. but having that delayed gratification and, and waiting and deciding you know my priorities are elsewhere um that, that was definitely that was very yep. hard for, especially me. I have so many hobbies. <laughs> it's so yeah. easy to spend money totally. um, and to be committed and uh, uh, heading in the right direction for years. Uh, it, it's tough. Well, good. How long, how long was the master's? How long was the separation because of the master's? Uh, about two and a half years. Wow. wow. That's brutal. Yeah. Yep. That's harsh. Oh. Okay. Wow. What was the thing that you guys would say to another couple listening? That maybe may have a similar story, maybe not, but they're trying well, to get well, out of let's debt. Let's just be real clear. They didn't do that separation to get out of debt. They did that separation to get your occupational therapy master's, mm -hmm. okay? And you did it, and you cash flowed it, of course. But yeah. the separation was due to that. Not the separation, but I mean being separate mm -hmm. is a better way of saying it, was due to that, right? Yes, yes sir. Was due to so, the I'm school sorry, go, you, Yeah, go no, you know, it's good. Good clarification. The school you got into versus the job, right? That was, that was the decision you guys made. Yep, yeah, and in, in my career in sales is very long-term. Right. Yeah. Uh, the idea is I'm going to spend my whole life in San Antonio, which is a great idea to me because I love San Antonio. Yeah. Um, but the, to be jumping around from location to location doesn't really give you the opportunity to build a backlog and uh, build relationships. So uh, a, a two year, a, a two year delay or two years of patience, mm -hmm. really, um, versus the long term career. Yeah. It, it's a it's an adult decision you have to make and you have to commit to it. Totally. Absolutely. Wow. So what was the thing that you would tell somebody, here's what you have to do in order to get out of this much debt? Because this is a lot, you guys. I mean this is this is six yeah, six figures. So what would you say you have to do this? Um our biggest two things were consistency mm -hmm. um towards our set goal and seeing that as the bigger picture and communication. So even 
if we wanted something that we knew we shouldn't get, we would still talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Man, this is going to be so cool to get later Someday. down the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not no, just not now. Yeah. And same with the long distance. Really, it's the same two ideas. Yeah. yeah. Consistency, communication. Yeah. Whatever. Feelings good, bad, all the in-betweens. Yes, yeah. that's good. So, right. um, you know, it occurs to me that not only have you done this amazing 117000 but you also cash flowed this. What did the masters cost? Oh, you, goodness. Yeah, you know, that's a tough question to, to answer. So um, I filled out probably, I have no idea how many scholarships and mm, grants I filled out good. during that time. That was like pretty much my part-time job yeah. going to school. Mm-hmm. Um we also benefited a little bit from the COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Our loans were put on hold, mm-hmm. um, the government ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we used that opportunity to not have to pay the minimums on those. Mm-hmm. And then I got a lot of uh, grant opportunities through COVID okay. to continue so it my did, education. It didn't cost a ton then, actual cash. No, it, no. I'd, I'd say it's probably a 50-50 breakdown. Um, That's great. It, it I was mean, the back half of the, the the last two semesters were mostly my income going and contributing to that. The first okay. three semesters, I'd say, Kendall did a whole lot of the work, um, especially with um, scholarships and grants. It's great, yeah. you guys. Okay, oh. so you put about 100 into that and about 117 into the other. Oh, 100, I don't know. <laughs> well, you said half and half. About, I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking you really, in your, the whole situation here, you really did about a $200,000 move. Yeah. Is what I'm guessing. And I, I was thinking that because that's, you know, it's one thing to pay off 117. It's another to do a 200. Or probably 50,000 you know. for the half and half probably, that you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah 50, probably closer. But still, 50,000. Oh, okay. It's still I see a lot. what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Still wow. Lot. Way to go, y'all. Thank Great you. job. Who was cheering you on? Oh, gosh. Our entire family and friends. Yeah. Of course, we still got funny looks every <laughs> once in a while, especially when we said no to like fun events and vacations yeah. and all those things. Yes. But. They were still cheering us on. Great job, you guys. Oh, okay. Was, so was you it have... worth it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It, it, it changes it changes my decision making. You know, it, it gives me the opportunity to decide for myself what I want mm-hmm. and what our family wants. That's right. Great. And it just clears clears your thought, clears your focus. So good, good for you guys. Well done. All right. Let's bring up your baby. Are you going to have that in the debt free screen? Yes, okay. absolutely. And uh, what's his name? Nolan. And how old is Nolan? He's 15 months. Oh, go so big guy. Great. Go big guy. They always like the microphones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they grab them. That's great. All right. Ryan and Kendall and Nolan, San Antonio, Texas, $117,000 paid off in 54 months, making 65 to 172. Count it down. <laughs> Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Free. Yeah. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Man, those people are goal-oriented. With the baby. Oh, my gosh. They did a lot. Come here. Oh, they did a lot. It's amazing. A lot of sacrifice on so many levels. And they amazing. did it. Amazing. That's it. It's the movement. It's the proactiveness of people that stand on the stage, and it's incredible. It's incredible. All of you listening. It heroes. Could be you. Yeah. They're heroes. Well done, hero. This is The Ramsey Show. Luke 637, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. John F. Kennedy said, forgive your enemies, but never forget their names. (laughs) I guess that's fair. Oh, that's fun. Uh, Well, folks, if you got questions about taxes, we get it. Taxes are confusing. And to help you get a better better handle on them, uh, we get some questions from time to time for our listeners. I want to avoid overpaying taxes each month 
what do I need to change with my paycheck? Well, let's correct one thing. It's not overpaying because you don't pay. It's over withholding. See, withhold means I hold back. They're holding part of your check, withholding some of your check. They're not letting you have some of your check to apply to your taxes. If you don't need to pay the taxes, you get it back as a refund, meaning you have had too much taken out of your check, too much withheld. So you're not overpaying, you're just having too much withheld. Now, once we say that, if it's a simple couple of ways you can do it. The simplest way is if nothing has changed, if the tax code didn't change, and your situation didn't change, you just simply divide it by 12 and say, I need that much. You have $3,000 refund. I got $250 a month, too much coming out of my check. Go to HR and say, reduce my withholding by 250 bucks a month. And they can do the payroll adjustment and do that. Real simple. But if things have changed, then you use tax software, like, for instance, the Ramsey, tax soft, Ramsey Solutions tax software, and do your taxes. But don't, you know, you're, you're just running out the taxes to see what it is. What is your taxes going to be? And so then have that much, whatever your tax bill is going to be, have that much withheld from your check over the year. And so let's just pretend. Let's say your taxes are $10,000. Well, that's $833 a month. So you need to have that withheld from your check. Um, and, of course, either way, you've got to fill out a new W-4 with the HR or with payroll to get that done. So the trick is do not get a refund. If you get a refund, it means you've loaned the government your money at zero interest all year, and they send it back to you in April with no interest. You have a stupid savings account. That's what a tax refund is, a stupid savings account. So do not be setting yourself up for a refund. Well, if you're getting a refund, adjust your withholding because don't pay them so much. Don't don't let them take more than they need to take if you don't owe it. Now, don't underwithhold where you have a big tax bill at the end of the year. That's going to get you penalized and create cash flow problems for you. But if you're getting three thousand bucks a year, four thousand bucks a year, twelve hundred bucks a year back every time, that just you got a stupid a thousand dollars or more. Yeah, you got a Christmas account with yep. the, with the freaking federal government that no interest. Don't do that. And Santa Claus doesn't live in D.C. This is not a gift from them. This is your money that you gave them and shouldn't have given them, and then they give it back and act like they did something. And you're like, oh, I got a refund. It's like you're smart. It's not smart. It's the opposite of smart. So don't do this, okay? Change your withholding with your W-4 by readjusting to the proper amount of tax coming out. Now, for more tax help, go to RamseySolutions.com slash tax. Tons of all kinds of blog stuff there to help you with taxes. And uh, you'll find the Ramsey Smart Tax, which is our no-nonsense tax software. People are changing to it from the other one in droves. There's no upfront pricing, or it's low upfront pricing, I'm sorry. No hidden fees. And if you have a complicated situation, you can even go to one of our tax pros with Ramsey Trusted. They'll help you. So RamseySolutions.com slash tax tax. Shannon is in Dallas. Hi, Shannon. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? Okay. So my husband and I were new listeners um, and we did the baby steps a little bit out of order. Um, so we had some good home investment um, opportunities. And so we have our mortgage paid off. Uh, we make about 180000 a year before taxes. Um, the only debt we do have is a car note, which is about fifty k a year. Um, so, uh, we've got six months emergency fund. I guess my main question is we have zero retirement. Um, so I work part time and my husband, um, works for a small company, so they don't get any retirement, um, through his job. Uh, so our plan was to save up cash and put down on a rental property. Um, but after listening to you guys, we think maybe we need to do the well, we need to pay off the car first, obviously, but then um, do 15% uh, for retirement mm -hmm. uh, in a Roth. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess uh, my question is we're almost 40. So in 20 years, will we have enough in retirement, which is 15%? Yeah, have you run the calculations? I, I did. It was like 600000 I think, but that's yeah. without um, percentage increases and stuff. Yeah, and that, that's if you could never get a raise. 
Right, yeah. right. And the other thing is this. If you're at your, you know, let, let's say you get the car paid off and you have an emergency fund. You told me your mm-hmm. house was paid off, right? Yes, we don't So have you're a at baby step seven, so 15% no longer applies. At that point, you, you, could, you could invest out. more. You would max everything that you've got available. Roths, 401ks. He doesn't have anything at work, though, and you don't have anything. So all you've got is Roth, right? right? Mm-hmm. There's no self-employed mm-hmm. yeah. income anywhere, right? Right. Okay. How large is the company he works for? Uh, there's about 10 people. Okay. Um. If I were him, I I would sit down and talk with the owners and go, hey, guys, you can put this stuff together really inexpensively. Right. And coach them up. Have them have them sit down with one of the Ramsey SmartVestor pros, and you can start a retirement plan for a 10-person company, and it costs almost nothing. Okay. Okay. So see if they'll um, start that. Because they did just start um, health insurance. They didn't even have that before. Well, yeah, that's going to cost them in penalties under Obamacare right. if he doesn't do that. So they got to do that. But the, yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they, yeah, it, it's really inexpensive and, and very easy to set up for a 10 person company. Have them get in touch with them smart Vista bros. That'll help you put even more in. So here's what I would do. I would max out. Let, let's say that you could do, I don't know, 20%, but you can't, you don't, you can't find enough stuff to put it in. So you max out to who Roths, you put up whatever you can at the company. If they start doing something fun, you put something over there and you still got more money Then pile up that money to buy real estate for cash. Okay. And then so you're, once, you're going to uh, end up with well, a net, you're going to end up with a net worth, uh, probably close to 5 million when you hit retirement. Okay. If you it, do it all that. The, Roth maxed out and then investing in in real estate that you pay cash for and your increases in income and you just keep doing all this stuff for the next 25 years you're going to end up between between three and five million okay awesome. that, that's where you'll be right. six hundred thousand is just simply doing a Roth and you're going to do more than that okay so was that both of you guys out. is that two Roths Shannon um well yeah so, yeah so I'm part-time oh, okay um, you can so do two you can do two you can do a spousal though yeah. You can okay. fully fund both yeah, Roths. Yeah, y'all both need Roths. But that's okay. only six grand. Yeah, and they can do what yeah. they can t- tell him this. Tell him to check with, okay, you need to go to a Smart Investor Pro anyway to sit down and set your Roths up. So go to RamseySolutions.com, click Smart Investor, and they'll help you get your Roth started. Okay. Do you have okay. kids? We do, and they're teenagers. And um, one we just put through Fire Academy, so we paid for that. But then okay. um, the other one, she's seventeen. Good. So, so we're we cash we're cash thing. flowing that then at this stage, and right. then, okay. Then tell the ask, tell your husband ask his boss to meet with your investment advisor, your Smart Investor Pro, and they can show him how to do. If you can remember this, it's called a simple IRA. It's a four hundred one k for small businesses, and it costs almost nothing to set up. Okay. And then your husband can load that up, and the other people will jump on board too. But he'll be able to do it. There's almost no regulation on it. It's a very. It's why they call it the simple IRA. Mm-hmm. It's a four hundred one k for tiny businesses like this. It's perfect. And so okay. they can do all of that. And then you you got more money beyond that that you can keep doing. So just pile up that cash because you don't have a house payment. You don't have anything, girl. You can have a great life and still pile up some money. And you're going to be right. able to pay no, cash for some real estate. The real estate's going to go up in value. Mm-hmm. Your home's going to go up in value. You're going to be in great shape. We, you know, Get the car paid off, though. Shannon. Yeah, the fir- first step's car <laughs> paid off in the emergency fund. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Very good. Good great question. Job, that puts us out of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. <laughs>